Hello everyone, this is my first video, so basically today we're covering the Shugi slash Dream Pop Iceberg. This iceberg is an amalgamation of an already existing iceberg by the Ice Geezer on Twitter on top of the one I created to give you all this behemoth mess. Now if you don't know what an iceberg chart is, there's many ways to explain. But for this iceberg, the top of the iceberg will be well known slash common knowledge and the bottom of the chart having entries that are obscure and such. For example, topics that the average person may know will be in the first few layers, while topics that are a bit more obscure will be covered deeper within. So if there's some not safe for work, you know, topics in the top of the iceberg, then it's because it's rather known. So it can be a fluctuation of sorts. Also, viewer discretion advised because we're going to talk about some messed up things in some of the later entries. And with that said, I introduce you all to the shoegaze slash dream pop iceberg. My Bloody Valentine, basically the face of shoegaze. You can't go anywhere without seeing this album cover at least once in your life. My Bloody Valentine is an Irish band that formed in 1983. This is the first entry due to the popularity of the band and basically defining the term shoegaze after the release of their 1991 album, Loveless. And also a very important landmark in music history. Remember them because they will show up a lot more, you know, later in the iceberg. Slowdive is another popular shoegaze band from Reading, UK. Slowdive is also compared a lot to My Bloody Valentine due to both groups paving the way for shoegaze. Both being sonically different though, with some people putting Slowdive into a mellower, dreamier sound compared to its contemporaries at the time. Listening to their biggest record yet, so Vlocky, and comparing it sonically to My Bloody Valentine, it's no wonder why a lot of people think this. Ride is an English rock band formed in Oxford in 1988. They are also mentioned along with My Bloody Valentine and Slow Dive when mentioning the genre as a whole. They released their debut album Nowhere, which was important for the popularization and also sonically for the genre of shoegaze. The entry name is self-explanatory. This points to the assumption that the music industry hates shoegaze. The reason for this is due to music reviewers and websites ranking some shoegaze albums with low scores. I find this entry to be a little anachronistic because in recent times, Shugis has been seen in rather positive light. I think the reason for this entry here was also due to the beginnings of Shugis and how the genre was seen back then, especially when it came to Slow Dodge just for a day record which had some rather mixed reviews from some critics. It was said that during the creation of Loveless, My Bloody Valentine bankrupted their label Creation Records due to high cost and stretched time to make the record. It was reported that the album cost roughly around 200 to 300,000 euros and took around two to three years to make. The high cost and time arrangements were also due because apparently the band constantly changed studios and engineers. All that plus living costs and gear that was used for the record were all adding up. Frontman Kim Shields did an interview back in 2007 addressing the whole situation, stating that creation was already nearing bankruptcy before the making of Loveless was even being concocted. By the time they were already recording the record and onwards, Creation was already bankrupt. This refers to the recent influx of shoegaze music getting popularized on TikTok. This is a term for bands and artists who make shoegaze music that is very similar to something that you hear out of So Vlocky or Loveless. Just the pure embodiment of what standard shoegaze means or is, you know, seen as. Slow Life has a good deal of unreleased music, most notably a track called Sleep which is probably the most known unreleased song that Slow Dive has ever done, even being in Spotify for a brief moment of time. They have dozens of songs that are either unreleased or demos, so much so that there's remastered albums based on the demos that you can easily find with a search. There has been some confusion when it comes to the meaning of these genres. Some people refer Dream Pop as a subgenre of Shugis that focuses a lot more on the mellow, spacey, softer sound compared to the harsher wall of sound that presents itself within standard Shugis. While others just put Dream Pop as a genre of its own, I personally agree more with the latter because even though both may be similar, Dream Pop is different enough for it to be distinguished as its own genre. This entry refers to the very start of Shoegaze, starting with not much recognition or attention compared to the onset of grunge that was starting to become popular. There's an awesome video by Trash Theory that just explains this entry way better than I do. It's also longer. This entry is just about how the Beach Boys song All I Wanna Do sounds like Shoegaze. Alright, so you guys know Wojax, right? Like the little meme characters. And, you know, this is basically about how there's a lot of variations of Wojax, and one popular Wojax is the Doomer Girl. This Wojax is, you know, 
based off apparently from Rachel Goswell, a member of Slow Dive. They're so similar that some people believe that the Doomer Girl was, you know, based off Goswell and, you know, just her and Shoegaze itself. This entry refers to Slow Dive once again and how members of Rachel Goswell and Neil Housted dated for some time, breaking up while Sovlaki was being made, inspiring songs like Daggers and others. This is about the shoegaze influence that other artists who aren't full-fledged shoegaze band to use. The influence is so strong in their music that some people confuse their genres and refer to them as shoegaze because of it. Examples of this are, you know, Deftones, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, you know, just bands like that. Uh, you'll probably, this mostly stand from the Deftones song called Be Quiet and Drive which sounds very shoegazy, so I cannot blame people for thinking this. This is referring to guitar tabs. The reason it's here is due to some, it's due to how some tabs for shoegaze or dream pop songs are really hard to replicate or, or find, or just don't sound like the songs due to the way they're produced or the way the artists played the notes and which pedals and gears they used. This ties back to a common criticism of shoegaze, and that's that some people find shoegaze quite boring because it follows the same trend of the usage of reverb and distortion. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was getting into shoegaze, I I thought that this was, you know, I thought, I actually thought this was, you know, the case too, until I started like delving myself into other artists that, you know, weren't just seen as shoegaze, but had shoegaze influence. Belinda Butcher is a member of My Bloody Valentine, and this entry refers to her last name and this picture. Covers refer to the many covers of shoegaze songs that can be found in YouTube, either imitating the song as close as possible, just from instrumentation, just from the instruments, or their own variation of the song, either acoustic or some other aspects that makes it different enough from it, from the original while using the original as the main base of it. This entry is about how some shoegaze bands change their names, either due to copyright reasons or just because the new name suits them a lot better and such. There's a running joke in the community that Loveless sounds like a vacuum cleaner, spawning memes because of it. But part two of the other entry, the, sh uh, the shoegaze versus dream pop entry, this is about how there's a lot of subgenres of shoegaze. There's subgenres sub of shoegaze, it's mostly it being in tandem with another genre. We'll go over more of the popular versions of these subgenres later. Feels like he was an album by Modesto California band Whirl. This is referring to how before the album dropped, people believed they disbanded or were on hiatus due to not dropping music or having any sort of activity before Feels Like You. Then they dropped it exclusively for vinyl, until it got late in which Whirl then released it for streaming platforms. Deaf Consciousness refers to the album by Connecticut band Have a Nice Life, which rose to fame in recent years due to the dark atmosphere and the sounds that embody the record. During its initial release in the years following, the album was shrouded in obscurity, being an underground classic among internet communities. It wasn't until at least 2021 where the album picked up steam due to the rising popularity of songs like Blood Hell and a quick one before the eternal warmth of ours Connecticut. This entry refers to the animated cartoon Beavis and Butthead, specifically season 7 episode 35, named The Future of Beavis and Butthead, in which it showed the start of 90s band, the 90s band Hum hit song Stars, purely joking about how the song has a very dramatic and brash opening that also sounds like the end of the song. This is the name of the Reddit community key community for shoegaze is pretty active for a niche genre. In this community, you'll find a lot of the same type of people, such as shoegaze purists, chill people, people asking for tabs, memes, bands promoting themselves, and a lot more. Now, those are the only ones that can, you know, pop up in my head, and I can't wait to promote this on here. This is a follow-up of the last entry. This refers that a good majority of the shoegaze community don't really mention a lot of other shoegies bands weren't as well known. Well, it's gotten better in recent years, but back then this was a prime issue. There was a lot of frustration because there's a lot of shoegies and dream pop bands that you know are really good, but just don't get the recognition they deserve. Hyperview refers to Kingston's Pennsylvania's band title fight last album before they went their separate ways. The reason it's on here is due to the mixed reviews it had within its community. 
Hyperview was the departure of Title Fight's known sound, which was a more punk sound that fans grew to love them for. However, Hyperview changed that because Hyperview was a lot more, you know, Shugis influenced. You either love the record or you hate it. And personally, I freaking love this record. It's really good and I don't know, it's just, it's just good. The music narrative made a great video explaining their origins and the lead up to Hyperview. With only some rumors spawning if the band will ever make a comeback. Alright, uh, I'm not sure why I put this this deep into the iceberg, but okay. Either way, as mentioned earlier, Dream Pop is a genre or subgenre of shoegaze that usually gets confused with shoegaze due to their similarities. Dream Pop is a, usually a lot more mellower and slower compared to shoegaze. New Gaze is a variation of shoegaze. Now there's some confusion about this term because there really isn't much to differentiate new gaze to shoegaze, other than the era I guess. Jazz Master is a joke around the community that just refers to the Jazz Master guitar that a lot of shoegaze bands use. If you look at an artist's gear page, chances are you'll see a Jazz Master in there. The joke comes due to the lush sound that comes from these freaking guitars. Another slow dive entry, this refers to a bootleg vinyl which was called Fast Dive. I can no longer find or see this video, so I'm just assuming this is the case. So please take this with the tiniest grain of salt. Speaking of vinyls, this entry is about the vinyls that some shoegaze records have. Either some are limited and hard to find, while others you can find with ease. There's also a lot of bootleg vinyls that circulate around the shoegaze community, an example being the last entry. Post Feels Like You is a follow-up of Feels Like You entry. This just refers to the question about this just refers to where the members are and what they're doing and judging by some of the instagram stories of some of the members whose instagram pages aren't active seems like all of them are still friends and are pretty cool with one another which is pretty wholesome and in 2023 we saw a world comeback with muda and blue sugar and also the release of the new live vinyl another world entry that, ref that refers to feels like you and world as a whole this is a YouTube channel that posted teasers for Feels Like You on YouTube. By the name alone, this refers to another variation of shoegaze but with grunge in it. That's it. Backwards shoegaze just refers to an LSD in search, LSD in search of God song called Backwards. Alright, how many times have I said shoegaze already? Alright, but this entry is about how a Reddit post claimed to have heard restaurants play shoegaze music. And it's an entry because shoegaze is kind of niche and very hit or miss for a lot of people. So seeing this type of music just be played in some public area is just rare to see. To knock out the rest of the variations of the genres in this layer, you know, shoegaze, dream gaze, gr grunge gaze, whatever gaze, we're gonna end it off with metal gaze, which is of course another variation of shoegaze but with metal. Some people just coerce this team with black metal or black gaze or whatever the hell. This refers to, yeah, you know the drill, rap and shoegaze, and it's best explained by this comment. This entry is self-explanatory, and it's just about how artists use shoegaze as an influence for their music to make hybrid genres of sorts. This entry refers to the cover art of their 1990 release of Whirlpool. Some people are confused about what the animal is and you know some people believe that this was either a fox or a coyote but it's just a cat. World has been no stranger to controversy especially in their earlier years being caught out for homophobia and just being kind of messed up to some of their fans just being edgy and stuff but this got them in a lot of trouble with their label eventually dropping the group due to their controversies. I'm not gonna lie, some of the comments are pretty freaking funny, but in recent years, it seems like they matured as people and as musicians, which I'm glad to hear and see. Gear Talks is referring to the videos on YouTube that show members of bands gear. Gear just meaning equipment they have for the music, such as effects, pedals, guitars, amps, and stuff like that. Foreign Gaze just refers to the foreign community of shoegaze music. Japanese, Chinese, French, Russian, shoegaze is pretty known in a lot of foreign areas and the shoe the asian shoegaze community is actually pretty big and pretty good deaf heaven is a black gaze band from san francisco california this entry is about how deaf heaven is also seen as shoegaze due to just how much influence you can hear in their music so much so that 
Some people just think that they're just a full-on shoegaze band. Samples is referring to two things. Samples within shoegaze music itself, such as voice clips from movies or poems, or people sampling shoegaze music. Alright, Death Coast is a band from Brisbane, Australia. And this is about how it's pretty damn hard to make out what they're saying in their music. Or finding lyrics for four of their songs because it's just hard to find lyrics for their songs. Uh, there are some lyrics that can be found and I'm not sure if any of their vinyls have lyrics because some or a lot of vinyls that I have have a little page that shows the lyrics to their songs. So I'm not really sure if the vinyls have this but either way it's still a good band. Kevin Shields is usually seen as the main honcho from My Bloody Valentine. Kevin has specifically mentioned in interviews that he has tendinitis and tinnitus due to the amount of time and hard work needed during the making of Loveless and you know, just how loud their shows are resulting in tinnitus. Uchu Nekuko or Universe Nekuko is a shugi slash dream pop duo which formed in 2012 in Kanagawa, Japan. With three albums and a few EPs in their belt, some people wonder how the people behind the music look like. Now the duo has changed with, you know, their roster of people. So yeah, it's kind of hard just finding their faces and any information about them. Now they have shown slight glimpses of their face in their Twitter account, which you can see here.